In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can run the spread air raid offense inside the five yard line and have a ton of success with a very simple two man route combination to the short side of the field. What's going on guys, my name is Cody and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden players that they can become. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd encourage you to do so. We release videos every day that can help you get better on both sides of the ball. Now in this video, like I said, we're going to be going over an air raid offensive goal line passing concept that I think you're going to absolutely fall in love with. It's a really fun little route to run and you're going to have a lot of success against man and zone. Now, uh, real quick, here's my audibles from these formations, just so you can see kind of some of the other additional routes. This is out of the Arizona Cardinals playbook. Um, so Y cross, smash, hitch seam, PA read, and then spread by flex, I've got Y corner, mesh, H shell across, and Y sail. The only reason that I bring that up is because we might talk about some other routes, so I might need to audible around. But the play that we're going to be coming out in is curl wheel, which I believe to be the best play in the entire game. Now, really quickly before we dive too far into the video, I do want to let you know that if you want to get my full Arizona Cardinals Air Raid Offensive Playbook, it's my favorite uh, my favorite offense that I've ran all season long, and I have released an entire guide. Actually, I've updated it, I think, two or three times and just recently made a major update to it. So if you want to learn how to run the Air Raid, um, it's a great resource, and it's just like 10 bucks, I think, maybe, maybe 15 but uh, that link is in the description if you want to get that. Okay, so Curl Wheel. And uh, what we're going to do with this, and this is really important for my uh, testing of this, it actually works a little bit better to the short side. Now, you can do the same concept on the wide side, and I'll show that, but we'll just run this to the short side first. So all we're going to do is we're just going to curl uh, Chris Godwin, and we're going to put Mike Evans on a fade. Now, when we curl Chris Godwin, it's really important that you smart route that curl route. Otherwise, it's basically a waste of a route, and it might as well be a streak, okay? Um, we're not going to do anything to the right side of the field yet. And then all you're gonna do is when you when you snap the ball, once you see that your fade has outside leverage, you're gonna bullet pass it to the outside, but you're gonna hold L1, which will make it a high point pass. And then you're gonna click onto the, um, the, the receiver and you're gonna basically swerve him and get a possession catch. So by holding the X button, okay? So snap of the ball. Let him get outside, pass it outside, and that's what you get right there. Now that is very consistent, and what you what you see happen uh, with this, this was out of a cover three, look, um, a lot of times these zones don't drop back, especially when you put this curl route out there. In the red zone, very specific to the red zone, it does happen outside of the red zone, but especially in the red zone, the zone that you would think that would go out there to guard that would be a cloud flat or a curl flat. But however, the way the red zone works, is those zones are underneath zones first. They're not deep zones. So they're taught, their logic is to play this underneath back wall. So they're basically trying to play this underneath zone. And as you can see right here, watch what happens. You see these zones kind of drift over in this area, but they don't drift back into the end zone. The deep zone, the deep zone is also looking right at this curl route. And so as you can see, once this just drifts to the outside, he by the time the, the corner recognizes that he needs to get back outside, there is so much space to be able to throw this to the back pylon of the end zone. And then the, the all you do is you see here, I click onto the receiver and I just swerve him inside and out, and then I hold the X button, and you get these nice animations in the back corner of the end zone. It's my favorite route to go to down in the end zone. Okay, so the reason why I love this concept is not just because of what it can do against zone, but what it can do against man. In Madden 21, there are um, animation, it's an animation based game. And what that basically means is you can trigger certain animations by how you swerve your player, by how you move your player, um, which is one of my favorite components of this game in the fact that I can kind of make some things happen, okay? And I think this is gonna continue to be uh, good next year. I think, it's, I think they're trying to bring user catching back a little bit next year, so I'm excited about that. And this is just one little piece of it um, this isn't even what you used to be able to do, but this is what we can do with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the same concept. I'm going to show it to you against man press. Uh, man press, in my opinion, will do the best job because if they, there are some things that they can do to win that. But the idea here is we want to throw the ball where only our receiver can get it. So we're just going to high point and pass lead outside, and then we're going to do that same swerve catch. So you're going to kind of wait till he's got kind of some separation right there. Click on. And as you see right there, that time where I'm going to catch it. Now, if you get that look right there where they've kind of got on top of the receiver, um, that's not a great look to throw this. So that's where I would check down to 
something else, right? I've got you know these cons, all these other receivers here that I can use to beat man-to-man -man coverage. The curl will beat man-to-man -man press to the inside. But now let me watch you here. See, that's that's in more of the animation we want, and that's where that's that's where it's really really good. When your receiver can get on top of the man-to-man -man coverage, it's game over. You will get these animations over and over again. And the the thing is, yes, I'm going up against the computer, but trust me, you can't click on and do anything about it. You really can't. In this year's game, you just can't do it. And so this is what you're going to get over and over and over again, especially with someone like a, um, if you have like short out elite on somebody, um, that would be a great ability to put at that position. And you would just absolutely moss people. Devonte Adams in regs is a goon with this. This is my favorite thing to do in regs. If I'm playing in regs and I need to score in the red zone and I don't throw the ball, I go to this play every single time. And honestly, I probably converted about 80 to 90% of the time. Let me show it to you again. Here he gets a little bit of a better jam, but as you see, as soon as my receiver gets on top, all I'm doing is I'm high pointing, throwing it to the outside, clicking on, just swerving him a little bit, and I'm getting that animation, okay? So that's really good. Another kind of coverage that you're gonna see is you're gonna see shaded up coverage. Um, I don't see that a ton. I see a lot of shaded down coverage. Shaded up coverage, let me just show you what that looks like. Um, you get a free release right off the rip and you get automa automatically on top of him. You're going to kill shaded up coverage in this year's game. Now, let me just for a second, spend a second on um, cover four because you might see some people go to cover four because they're thinking their logic, which I think is honestly sound football logic, is, well, I've got an outside quarter zone. That's an outside deep zone, so it's going to play to the outside of the coverage. Well, again, this is where I talk about curls in the red zone. Suck these zones in. He's outside. Again, it's actually worse to run that coverage. You're actually way more susceptible to this fade route if you run that coverage than if you just run a simple cover three. The problem is if you run a simple cover three, then it opens up my favorite concept in the red zone, a streak, a flat, and a slant on the same side of the field. And so if they run a lot of cover three, and I'm not saying that you can't throw your fade, obviously we showed that you can, but if they run a lot of cover three, I would implore you to try to hit this out his, this pass lead over here uh, to the streak. I don't know what Gronk was doing right there, but I would tell you if you if you at least peek this, I'm just saying just give it a quick look, and if you can hit this streak uh, in the red zone to Gronk, that would be a great move. So right here, just high ball. You don't even have to high ball right there. You just have to basically pass lead it. You just have to basically pass lead it up. Uh, to get it away from the user, I think is really important because the user, you're gonna, what you're gonna do is you're gonna force the user to have to sit on that side of the field. The three-man side has to be user. They can't cover that with any coverage um, in Madden. Uh, they're just not gonna be able to. Slant's gonna beat man. The route to the back's gonna beat a blitz. The streak's gonna beat cover three. Um, so just pass, you know. And again, they, David Lurk, David's got lurker. I might be throwing this a little bit too hot um, or too early. But basically, this shriek is going to come right up in the seams. Brady doesn't have Gunslinger. That's one thing that does kind of hurt this. Gunslinger does make this a lot better. But just right there. That's what we're looking for. Okay? So you've got that right there. And then you've also got, so let's say they go man press. And let's say you look to the you look to the fade and you just, for whatever reason, they win the press animation. You can't get on top of him. And you're like, what do I do? Well, one of the other things that I really like out of this is to basically do two slants on the right. Um, so you could do something like that with a flat attached to it. The reason why I like this is because that X receiver is not going to get pressed and you can hit him over the middle. Now you might be saying, as I would, that, well, Cody, that's great, but they're going to be using that first slant. Well, that's where we tag a second slant. That's why double slants are so good in the red zone. So we just run two slants, something like this, and what you'll see is that circle receiver will get inside position every time, and you're just going to get that easy uh, catch against the coverage. So... This is a great little red zone play. Um, I didn't show Tampa 2. Let me show you that real quick. Again, I think I did actually, but that cloud's not going to do anything. The deep half, you see they're going to sit inside. It's wide open every time. And I'm telling you from personal experience that it is very, very hard for them to intercept that. You might drop it, but it is very hard for them to intercept that um, as long as your receiver is on top of the player because what that tells, um, what that means is your quarterback can get it over the top where they can't they can't defend it, okay? Um, and then I wanna show you this two-man combination to the wide side of the field. Um, to the wide side of the field, it's not as good. I just have found that the outside third play is better to the wide side of the field. I find that the curls are really good to short side of the field. They're not as good to the wide side of the field, which is why I love this two-man concept here. But then what that allows me to do 
is now I can have something like this where I have a post slant concept. So if they're cover three in me, I got this back of the end zone concept. Very good, very, very good concept. It gets the back of the end zone and just kind of drags across the formation. So uh, I absolutely love this play. This is my go-to money play in the red zone. I would encourage you to try it out. Uh, work on your user catches. Um, man coverage is the best thing they can do to try to get this to be defended. But I would tell you from personal experience, once your guy gets on top, um, you're gonna have a, you're gonna at least try to, you, you might get pushed out of bounds, but you're gonna at least have a pretty good chance for that animation, especially if you have like a Mike Evans or you know like if you're playing Mutt, you got someone that you could put there. Um, you know you really want to get this over the top. It's really the whole idea. You, I've tried, um, I've tried to lob this pass. And I haven't had as much success with it because, the, number one, the zones will get out there better. Um, but you see right here, that's what we're looking for. Every single time, just check, go into practice mode, test, test that out. You're going to have a lot of fun, I guarantee it. And uh, if you get the hang of it, you're going to be throwing some lasers down the red zone.